So let's look at uh, each one in more detail. We're going to talk about some more of the details and give you some examples, and then we're going to apply it to interface design. So you can see how it's used in interface design. All right, the law of proximity. All right, so the Gestalt law of proximity states that objects or shapes that are close to one another appear to form groups, even if the shapes, sizes, and objects are radically different. They will appear as a group if they are put together. So let's look at our examples up here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to quite be able to reach. So up here we have a bunch of blue stars. Here we have a bunch of, I guess, gold stars. When you look at the blue stars, what do you see? You see three out of four sideways. Anyone else? Oh, I see some of you. There's rows. How many of you saw the rows? OK. Everyone saw the rows, I think. Some people are lifting their fingers. OK, what about this? What do you see there? Now you see columns. Now let's take a closer look at this. We'll focus on the bottom one since I can reach that. These are exact duplicates of each other, right? So why is it that you're seeing these as columns? What are you noticing? Right, there's more space between the sides and less space when you are looking at it vertically. So without even thinking about it, we are grouping these as columns. Even though they are identical, that's something we do naturally. So let's take a look at some interfaces. Now, I want you to tell me, in looking at these three interfaces, all right, we are going to look at each one. I want you to tell me whether it's a good or bad design and whether you see proximity. So let's see, which should we start with? Let's start with this one on the bottom. What do you think? Good, bad, not so good, bad. You guys are kind of looking at it and you're like, okay, so quickly glancing, I can't tell what I'm supposed to do. That's usually what the students will tell me. Right, so it's kind of, you know, these are all kind of shoved together and then it's kind of hard to tell what's installed, what isn't installed, what you're supposed to do, unless you actually have to do what? Read. Right, and we've talked about reading very briefly already, right? Do we like to read? No, unless it's like a really interesting novel or a great comic strip, something more interesting than an interface. All right, so let's compare this one to something like this. What do you think of that? Some of you so so, others are saying, well, yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty easy. Where do you see our law of proximity in that interface that helps you figure out what you need to do and makes it easier to understand. Right, so we have a bunch of buttons. I can't quite reach that high, I'm gonna use my mouse. So we have these three buttons here, and we have these buttons here. They have different functionality. So when we look at this interface, we immediately assume we don't even really have to think about it. Number of affordance. Kind of somewhat affordance. We know that most likely they have very different functions. All right, so that's one. Now there's one other thing. So we talked about the buttons overall. There's one other thing that I'm looking for. A little bit louder. I can't. 
The separation between the pane, you're talking about this one, right? The pane and the different buttons. Which buttons do you think are associated with that pane? Uh, yeah, right, so, right, so add, remove properties, ones that are on the side. How did you know that? How did you know it wasn't these two? They're too far. So the ones that are most relevant are closer. I know you're thinking, isn't this obvious? Right, another obvious thing I'm talking about in this class. Okay, so why do we have stuff like this? If it's so obvious. Because it's obvious after the fact, when you're the user. Let's take a look at another one. Let's look at this one. What do you think of that? Good, we like this one. In fact, I've had students tell me that this one is even clearer than that one. Very subtle differences, right? But for some people, this actually is clearer. So, some will argue that there's more separation of the buttons. It's very subtle, but some will argue that. Others will say, well, there's just less stuff on the screen. I don't have to interpret as much. But again, imagine if these designers had just lumped all the buttons together. Oh, these are all buttons. I'll just stick them all together. Because they're all buttons, right? Would that have made it easier or harder? Harder. Much harder. We now can't just glance at it and make some of the assumptions that we're making. Now, similarly, you can also create interfaces where, because of proximity, you actually make it harder for people to understand. Who can give me one quick example? How would you change this interface? You can either separate them more or you can just move these buttons really close here and make it wider because, you know, screens are wider, right? I want to take a more appropriate space. So if, for some other reason, you decided to put these buttons down here closer to this pane and those buttons further away, that can confuse your users. I would love to say that I've never seen that happen, except I have. Fortunately, it doesn't happen very often. But you do want to remember that you can use these laws to really help your design, but also Think about how you're applying them and make sure you're actually doing something that's going to help your user.